common health and safety concerns in child care. Hi, I'm Sarah Myers. I'm the Registered Nurse and Child Care Health Consultant for Child Care Aware of North Dakota, a program of Lutheran Social Services of North Dakota. Tip overs are one of the most common causes for injuries and deaths for children. Children tend to use the drawers as steps to climb up. Do not store things appealing to children on the top of shelves and dressers to prevent them from trying to climb up to get it. Secure dressers and shelves to walls to prevent tip overs. TVs are another source of tip over deaths and injuries. The older style TV is very heavy. If you have an older TV, it is best to place on a low and wide TV stand. If possible, place in corner and push TV back as far as possible so the children cannot get behind it. Do not store items on top of the TV. Do not place a tablecloth or towel under the TV. The child could pull on it, causing the TV to fall down. Flat screen TVs can also tip over. If possible, mount to the wall. If not, you can purchase safety straps to fasten the TV to the TV stand. Place grip or shelf liner under fish bowls, aquariums, or plants to prevent them from being pushed off the surface. Bifold doors are a potential pinching hazard. Doors can also cause pinching or a fracture or even an amputation. You can purchase safety devices to protect little fingers where the door closes as well as along the door jam. Exercise equipment can be dangerous. Keep unplugged. Keep emergency stop key removed and stored in another location. Keep in a room not accessible to children if possible. Fireplaces create many potential hazards. Fireplace tools are dangerous. Keep out of reach. If possible, don't use the fireplace during child care hours. If the fireplace is used, it is recommended to use a gate or at least a screen to protect the children from burns. A hearth can also be a hazard for injury. If possible, use safety bumpers or cushions to cover the edges or corners. Gates are very important to have up when there are small children to prevent falls from stairs. Wall-mounted gates at the tops of the stairs is recommended. Pressure gates should only be used at the bottom of stairs or between rooms. Please consider design when purchasing. Buy a design that does not aid in climbing or create a head entrapment hazard. Cords are one of the top five injuries for children. Blind cords should be tied up. Do not place cribs or pack and plays within reach of windows with blinds. Another hazard are phone chargers. Because of their long cord, they can also cause strangulation. Make sure that you have these out of reach of children. Items with strings should be no longer than 12 inches for children under 3 years of age. Straps, necklaces, neckties, etc. should be removed or not accessible for those under 3 years of age. For straps that cannot be removed, it is recommended to tie a knot to shorten the strap. Measure the spaces between railings inside and outside. If the space between the railings is 3.5 inches or greater, it is considered to be a head entrapment hazard. This means that the child's body can fit between the railings, but not the child's head. Protective barriers made of plastic or mesh netting are available for purchase to protect children from getting between the railings. Choking hazards are common in child care. Button lithium batteries are not only a potential choking risk, but more importantly, they can produce a chemical reaction when they come in contact with tissue such as the inside lining of the esophagus of the trachea, therefore causing a burn through the tissue. The battery needs to be removed within two hours to prevent damage. These batteries are found in items such as remotes, books, musical cards, and anything else that would you'd need a small battery inside of them. So you always want to make sure that whatever you do have has, um, is shut properly and tightly. CPSC recommends that all small items are larger than one and a quarter inches in diameter and longer than two and a quarter inches in length. However, the CPSC also recommends that all round items are larger than one and three-fourths inches in diameter. The picture on the left is a choke tube. It follows the guidelines of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the CPSC. Choke tubes can be purchased online. To make things easier, it is recommended to check all small toys with a toilet paper tube since this will cover all small items regardless of their shape. If the item fits into the tube, then it is not recommended for children under the age of 3 years. Keep all poisons locked and out of the reach of children. Check all indoor and outdoor plants to make sure they are not poisonous. The plant pictured on the left is a cyclamen and it is toxic. 
The plant pictured on the right is a philodendron, is commonly found in homes, but is mildly toxic. If you don't know what types of plants you have, you can look online for pictures or take a picture of your plant or bring a leaf or bloom from your plant to a greenhouse or floral shop for identification. If your plant is toxic, place out of the reach of children or remove from the child care. But please remember, even if out of reach, the leaves can fall off where children could access them. Chemical air fresheners are poisonous. They can also irritate airways for children if they have asthma or allergies, and they can also be a source of fire because they are flammable. It is best to open windows and remove the source of smell if there is an odor. Electronic cigarettes, or e-cig, liquids must be kept out of the reach of children. They are colored and flavored like candy, sold in bottles with pictures and cartoons, very attractive to children. Many are sold in bottles that are not child resistant. As little as one teaspoon of the electronic cigarette or e-cig liquid is toxic to a toddler. Cigarette waste is dangerous and must be kept out of the reach of children. Be mindful of outside environments and public spaces as well. Pet food can contain salmonella. Licensing requires that it is not accessible to children and not kept in a food or eating area. Baseboard heaters. If possible, don't use them during childcare hours. If you have to use them, turn them on early in the morning before the children arrive to warm up the area, then turn them down or off when using the space. Also watch for children inserting their fingers. It is sharp inside. There are protective covers you can purchase for baseboard heaters to prevent children from inserting their fingers, hands, or items. Space heaters can tip over. Place them away from traffic areas. Do not use without supervision. Make sure that they are not hot to touch. Plug them directly into the wall, not into an extension cord or power strip. Keep them three feet away from flammables to prevent fire. Dishwashers hold knives, detergent, food remnants, and a falling door, which some children use as a step stool. Click it closed. Child safety straps are available. Keep all poisons locked and out of the reach of children. Detergent pods look like candy. Detergent is poisonous. Don't load the dishwasher while children are in the room. Front controls on stoves for gas and electric. Cover knobs with safety covers or remove the knobs entirely. Knife blocks can cut or amputate a finger or a hand. It is recommended to keep knife blocks out of the reach of children and out of sight if possible. Bathrooms are a place of many potential hazards. One would be medications place out of reach. Preferably don't even store them in the bathroom unless it's a place that can be locked and out of reach since the older children are able to use the bathroom independently. Toiletries such as mouthwash or fingernail polish remover, sharp items such as the nail clipper on the countertop or the razor in your shower, curling irons or flat irons are a burn hazard and should always be unplugged and kept out of the reach of children. Trunks or toy boxes with covers are potential hazards for pinching, suffocation, and head entrapment. Remove cover if possible. Install safety hinge and side cover so cover closes slowly. Use safety lock on outside so children cannot open it. Open shelving is a safer and more developmentally appropriate way to store toys. Safety hazards commonly found in a classroom. Cracked plastic containers creating sharp edges. Fake flowers with exposed wire. Dramatic play shoes with exposed nails or staples in the footbed. Balloons are not recommended to use with children under 8 years of age. Extra saucers keep stabilizing feet down at all times to prevent tip overs. High powered magnetic sets are very dangerous. Many have been recalled. When swallowed, they can connect inside a child's digestive system, causing a bowel obstruction. They are not recommended to use with children of any age. Alphabet magnet letters are okay for those three years and older since the magnets are not strong enough to connect if swallowed. Loose cords attached to the fan or a radio could cause strangulation from the cord or the cord could be used to pull the item down on a child. Teacher's scissors, staff purses or bags could contain a variety of hazards. Plastic bags large enough to fit over a child's head could cause suffocation. Plastic slides and other pieces of plastic playground equipment, if they are over 18 inches in height, it is recommended to place over protective surfacing, such as sand, wood chips, mulch, pea rock, not over grass or dirt. 
it is recommended to make sure that there is a fall zone around the entire perimeter, six feet if possible. A two-person glider on a swing set can cause greater injury than a single seat swing. When two children use a glider at the same time, it increases the weight. Therefore, it increases the ability to cause injury if a child is hit. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that mini and full-size trampolines never be used at home, in routine gym classes, or on playgrounds. They should only be used in supervised training programs. If you choose to use a home trampoline, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends the following safety precautions. Adult supervision at all times. Only one jumper on the trampoline at a time. No somersaults performed. Adequate pet protective padding on the trampoline that is in good condition and appropriately placed. Check all equipment often. When damaged, protective padding, the net enclosure, and any other parts should be repaired or replaced. Providers should check their homeowner's policy and obtain a rider to cover trampoline-related injuries if not included in the basic policy, as well as check with their licensor.